So let's have a look at how we can create our own pipes in Angular. So just to recap, a pipe in Angular is something we can use in our template to transform a value of a variable or a property on the class. So in this example, we've got some items in an array called transactions, and they're just objects that have properties of dates and amounts of when theoretical transactions went, uh, took place. And then in the template, we're just creating a table that loops through all of those transactions and then displays them on the page. But of course, we might want to customize how this data is displayed to the user. So we can use pipes to actually transform that data, for example, using the date pipe and specifying what the format of the actual date should be. And also the currency uh, can also be changed. The amount that we've got in the transaction amount uh, can be customized using the currency pipe too. But what about if we wanted to do some calculations or do something a bit more complex that's not provided via the Angular pipes? Well, we can create our own pipe and transform the data with any kind of logic that we want. So to create a pipe in Angular, uh, a simple way to do it is just go back to the terminal and use the Angular CLI to generate a new pipe. So we can use ng generate and then pipe and then just give it a name. And for this, we're going to be filling out that interest column on the actual uh, table that we've got. So we're going to create a pipe called interest. So if we do that, the pipe will be created. And let's just set the app serving again. And you can see we've got two files that have been created. First is a spec file for creating tests for the pipe. And the second is the pipe component file or class itself that gives us all of the code to actually make a new pipe. So the pipe has been given a selector, it's been given a name called interest, and there is one function on the class that's been created called transform, and that's the function that gets called basically when data is passed into the pipe. So to use the new pipe, we need to do a couple of things. First of all, we'll select the name of it, and then in our component uh, template, we can then actually get the uh, pipe in use by passing in some data to it. So we'll create another column in our table row here. So another TD, and then we'll pass in the transaction amount uh, to the interest pipe. Now this is going to give us an error because we haven't told Angular about this pipe. Even though we've created it, the app component doesn't know uh, where it is or what it is. So we get this error in the browser here. So all we need to do for that is go over to the app component file and in the imports, we just need to import the interest pipe and then that error goes away. But of course, our pipe isn't actually doing anything at the moment, so we don't see any output in the table. But that's what we're going to do now. We're going to go over to the interest pipe that we created and actually return some values. So a couple of things here. We're going to be taking in a number as the value to actually work with, and that is the first argument that is passed in to the transform function here. So I'm just going to type this as number. So this will be the amount that's in the transaction object in the array. So 40, 20, 50, and 10, for example. And then once we've got that value, we can actually work with it and return a different value. So it's probably worth when you're creating a pipe like this to check that the value that's being passed in on the left hand side of the pipe actually has some value in there because otherwise you're going to be doing operations on something that doesn't exist. So we might uh, check its type and just make sure it's not undefined. So if type of value is undefined, then you can either return a number or what's usually recommended or safest is just to return null. And this transform function is going to be uh, set up when we create the pipe initially to return values of unknown. So we want to fix that. We want to make sure that it's returning either a number or we're going to return null potentially um, if the type of value is undefined. So what are we going to return from our interest pipe? Well, we're just going to do a simple calculation. We'll return the value, um, but we're going to multiply it by a small number, so uh, 0.024, for example. So that would kind of indicate 2.5% or 2.4%. And now you can see when the app reloads that the interest pipe is doing its work, and it's taking the amount from the left-hand side and it's calculating that interest based on this simple bit of math down here. So that is how you create your own pipes, but there are a couple of other things that you might want to be aware of. Uh, the first is that in the 
app component, we can actually chain these pipes together. So if you've got your own custom pipe that's doing something like calculating interest in this example, you don't have to then rely on adding in currency uh, properties as well, such as we have done with the dollar, because what we can do is just use another pipe to pipe in the value uh, to the currency pipe. And you can see the dollar symbol gets appended to all of these values on here as well. And the other thing is you might want to customize the way that the interest pipe calculates that interest, such as providing its own uh, interest rate uh, directly to the pipe, uh, which is pretty much the same thing that we've done here with the date pipe. Uh, we've passed in a format of how we would like the date formatted. So let's say we want to put in a specific interest rate. So we could say it's 0 0.05, for example. And then what that gives us is the ability to access that value inside of the pipe as well as an argument, which is supplied after the initial value. So it's the, basically the second argument. So we'll remove that args value there and we can access it. We'll give it a name, uh, say interest rate, for example. And we could set a default value for this as well. So that it always defaults to the 2.4%. Uh, and then to use that argument that's been passed in, we can just simply use it anywhere within this transform function, as you would do with a normal function. And we can just apply that interest rate to the value directly in the return value. And you should find that the uh, interest rate values have changed there based on what we passed in in the template. And of course, we could change that to something else as well. And you can see that those uh, values uh, that are in the interest column are being updated based on the argument that we're customizing the interest pipe with. So you go, that's how you create your own pipes and customize them in Angular. Of course, you can do pretty much anything that you want with the data that's passed in, and it doesn't have to be a simple value like a string or a number. You can pass in objects and arrays and do various different things with them, whatever you need to do for your particular use case.